Hi everyone, welcome to our very first Building Games on AWS series. My name is Gina Gizzi and I'm a Solutions Architect with AWS Game Tech. And today I'm going to show you how you can do analytics on AWS for your game. Okay, so we probably all scrolled through social media and have seen comments like this game is dead or there's too much server lag or this player needs to be buffed, right? Now, analytics can't solve all of your problems, but it can definitely help with a few of these. You're probably asking yourself, how do I do analytics? I'm not a data scientist. I don't have time to manage infrastructure, right? Well, don't worry, I have you covered. For all of your game analytics problems, we have the game analytics pipeline. But before we jump into talking about analytics on AWS, I do just want to do a brief overview about what analytics actually is and why it's important to have an analytics pipeline in your game. Analytics is finding insights from data, and while analytics can't make a hit game, it can definitely help to improve one. There are typically four different stages of an analytics pipeline, so let's review them. So the first phase is the ingest phase or the collect phase. This is how you gather all of your data from your data producers, which could be your players, the game itself, whether it's PC, mobile, console, or even the game backend. The next phase is store. Once you gather your data, you need to be able to store it somewhere. And there are some questions that you're going to have to answer, right? Is there going to be PII, personally identifiable information? How are you going to secure it? How are you going to organize your data? The next stage is process. This is where you process your data by doing ETL or extract, transform, and load to analyze it. And then finally, the last stage is visualize. And this is where you visualize or consume your data, usually using a business intelligence tool to get insights for your game. We often see that having an analytics pipeline and getting insights from data can help you do things like create more engaging games, monetize your game. It can also help with fraud and player investigations, as well as performance and error reporting. So to dive a little deeper into a few of these, you can use analytics to create more engaging games by improving your game design and optimizing your gameplay experience. If you instrument your game to emit game events, you can analyze data to reveal how your game is being played and use that data to enhance the game design for better engagement. For example, let's say you instrument your game to emit telemetry data of where player deaths occur on a map. You can use this telemetry data to create a heat map visualization or an overlay to see where player deaths occur most often on a map and identify opportunities to enhance your level design. You can also use analytics to better monetize your game. For example, are users that play the most also spending the most on in-game purchases? And this is important depending on the type of model of your game. Is it a free-to-play game with microtransactions or a one-time purchase game? Well, with analytics, you can better monetize your game by doing things like segmentation. You can create models of your players or cohorts to understand where they are in the player life cycle. This, in turn, can lead to better recommendations. You can encourage purchases. So maybe an XP-boosting item is not very popular. With analytics, you can decide whether you want to buff it or reduce the price or remove it entirely from the store. And you can also do targeted ads, like, for example, reward videos. You can find out which of your players are prone to spending and provide targeted ads for other items or even other games that you own. You can use analytics to help detect and prevent cheating or fraud. 
Fraudulent behavior can be very disruptive to the game experience and it can ruin the enjoyment for your other players. It's important to have a plan so that you can understand when fraud happens and react quickly to avoid it having a negative impact on your game. You can review how specific players behave in game and use that information to make changes if you detect fraudulent or abusive behavior. Uh, for example, can you detect if a player's lateral movement defies physics? Well, then they're probably cheating. Finally, you can use analytics to do things like monitor performance and error reporting. This can help you do things like improve your game infrastructure by understanding important metrics like CPU and memory utilization so that you can know when your peak usage times are and use these metrics to scale your infrastructure accordingly. You can also measure latency. Uh, if you're developing a latency sensitive game like a first person shooter, you're probably going to want to measure the latency that your end players are experiencing so that they can have an optimal experience. And then you can also analyze error trends. For example, have logs streaming from your application to proactively detect and prevent any errors that might come up. We have tons of customers doing analytics on AWS today, like Epic Games, who built a data lake on AWS to analyze billions of events generated from Fortnite, Zynga, who analyzes streaming data from Words with Friends using Kinesis Data Analytics, Rovio, who analyzes billions of events per day using S3, Redshift, EMR, and more. The thing that's important to keep in mind is, depending on the size and maturity of your game studio, you might not have a dedicated data analytics team to get insights, or you might not have a team that's dedicated to managing infrastructure. And that's why in this series, we're going to show you a solution we built that's entirely serverless and modeled as infrastructure as code, so you don't need to rely on a dedicated team to manage infrastructure. That's it for this episode. Make sure to stay tuned for the next episode where we'll discuss common industry challenges for doing analytics for games. Like, for example, trying to understand what data to collect and the fact that data has a shelf life and more. See you next time.